What's a, what's a good example of that? That's a good question on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking like all the different applications of AI, there's, there's so many. Um, so I'll, I'll give you an interesting example of recently where doctors, for example, they look at scans to determine if you have cancer. Right. Okay. And doctors have a hard time reading and analyzing scans. And they have about 70 to 73% accuracy. Oh, yeah. I actually remember with my grandma in the hospital right. watching them. So but... now there's been groups that build AI algorithms that analyze the same scans and they get up to 99% accuracy. I think right now we're at 90% accuracy. They're in a, in a very short term, they're predicting it's going to get to 99%, maybe even up to 100% of accuracy of determining if you have cancer or not right. over doctors. So AI is not going to replace doctors, but it's a great tool to support them, yeah. to, to enhance their work. A doctor doesn't want to be staring at little x-rays. Correct. Like, but then again, it's a machine listen, job. your vision can get you know, messed up. You could be in a bad mood. You could have whatever. It, you know, there's a lot of outside forces that impact humans, right? Our decision making and how we react to certain things. A machine is a machine. It's consistent. Artificial intelligence, if you, if you write the algorithm correctly, you're basically training it like you're as if you're training a child. There's a certain set of rules and there's certain sets of outcomes. Now, the difference is when a kid or a, an adult even is learning something new and when they make a mistake, there's a high likelihood they could make that mistake again, right? Mm -hmm. Even though somebody corrected them and said, this is a mistake, this is the right answer, right? So you might forget and might make that mistake again. Yeah. Where the AI makes a mistake and that mistake gets corrected, it doesn't make that mistake again. So the learning curve of AI products is much, much faster. Now, you still need to focus AI on individual verticals. There's a, the concept of general AI, which is what people are afraid of, you know, the Skynet and the you yeah. know, computers taking over the world. Unfortunately, it is a great possibility, but in a very far future, Today, we don't have the technology, we don't have the computing power, we don't have enough substance, and AI in its own is still too young to get there. So, I can't get Siri to tell me which movies to pick. Correct. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I think because, we're far from... So Siri, Alexa, Google Home, they're all attempting for generalized AI, right? They want AI to know everything, understand everything, be able to get the context of your questions. You know, try talking in slang to any of these machines. They'll break. They, they just don't, they can't keep up. Now, that doesn't mean... They haven't mean, been trained yet. Right. It doesn't mean that it's not going to get there one day. Yeah. But not today. But today, our focus is on what we call vertical AI. We see the advantage of utilizing artificial intelligence in solving complex problems. You know, it's, it's just another tool. AI is nothing crazy. It's not a black box. It's just another tool that helps us make better decisions, create better solutions, do things faster and smarter.